All right, let's talk about PEMF again. Um, we've made a PEMF for horses. I'll show you that one. And we're making a PEMF for dogs. We're going to make a dog PEMF. PMF bed for dogs. That's what we're going to do today together. So I'm going to take you to my dungeon. I'm going to leave my beautiful little baby horse behind. And uh, all this beautiful weather. And we'll go in the basement and uh, we'll talk about making a PEMF for dogs. Okay, before we build a mat, we have to do some calculation. And the reason why I brought you guys here, so you can see the homemade calculator I made for myself, it's also going to explain to you what makes the difference between a good mat and a bad mat. Uh, a cheap mat from some big companies out there that sells them for a lot of money. Okay, first of all, to balance it, we have to use Holmes Law. This whole calculator right here is just Holmes Law. That's all there is to it. I enter the data from my power supply which is 20 volt and 3.5 amps and then the wires that I have on hand to use which is 22 gauge. I'm going to put four coils in series and only one series. This is the size of my propane bottle 95 mil and I'm going to use 95 wraps and I'm going to have a 4 ohm external resistor. Now air is the output so it tells me we're going to be burning 2 amps and we're going to make this much heat and this is going to weigh this much and it's going to be this much resistance. Now, a lot of you guys are asking why do I use an external resistor? The external resistor is simply to take some of the heat away from the coil while still flowing a lot of amps through the mat. At the same time, it keeps the price of building the mat low. So if I put this to 250 wraps, for example, and I put this at zero ohms. Do you see how I lower the amp rider from two to one? More copper, more gauze. More amps, more gauze. You can see that I've increased the copper, but I cut the amp in half. So they're fighting each other. So you've got to balance it. Plus 250 wraps would be a two pound mat just in copper alone versus 95 which is three quarters of a pound also this is quite a bit cheaper now I could play around and I could put two coils in series with two in parallel and I could go to 250 wraps and now you can see because I parallel the two coils uh, my amperage just went straight up because I have very low resistance it's just Holmes law stuff um, if I increase that to 500 wraps, now I'm back to balance. But look at this, uh, it's almost four pounds, and this would cost a lot of money to build. And I'm not gaining that much of gauze at the end. It's also a simple uh, physics thing that you get saturation. And when you, increase, when you get to saturation, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, it won't make any more gauze. It doesn't matter how much more watt or amperage you're flowing through it. All you're going to make is heat. So 95, external resistor is a 4 ohm, keep the weight down, keep the price down. We're going to put them in series and only one of them and now we have a balanced system. And this is what we're going to go and build next. Okay, this is the box I have. Um, it's an old system, so I'm repurposing this. I got my 4 ohm resistor on the outside, 200 watts, it's uh, for the heat purposes. and like you saw in the calculator. Um, the information I got in the calculator, the numbers came from that power supply, an old laptop uh, power supply. And I will, uh, there's no timer on it, so I want to install a timer. And I have this old timer that I'm just going to add up to it. Uh, they're not that good. They burn a lot of my ZKPP2K because they leak. So you got to add a MOSFET to it to turn it on and off. But anyway, uh, I won't talk in detail about that because it's very complicated to wire these guys together but um, it's not that it's complicated it's just it's overly complicated the new system I'm using is way better so I'm gonna go and cut all that up put it back together and then we'll come back and uh, we'll carry on the build Here's my coils made. The reason why we use an ammo, just so you guys know, is just because 
you want the wire to be as close as possible to each other so there's a really good induction in there never ever ever use wire normal wire with thick insulation that's just no good anyway let's go build there's our box done the timer is built in that's the cord that goes to the mat and that's the power cord that plugs into the 120 and this is my cat Charlie that likes to hang out with me when I do stuff in the office okay um, just arbitrary measurement we're making 19 gauze I got my octopus there that's holding my probe in place and hey look we're gonna put a plate behind it's just an electric cover for um, electrical box and it fits perfectly underneath and we went from 19 gauze to 25 gauze just adding that so what's happening there is just uh, think of it as the plate as a reflector and reflects back up we're going to put a slightly larger plate and it reflects a little more you get the four corners sticking out and it reflects a little more now we're at 27 gauze and then we got uh, the 6 by 6 square plate which now will bring it up to 30 gauze. So we went from 19 gauze to 30 gauze and it just reflects the EMF back around and focuses it more towards the top. It's a really good way to increase uh, power gain without uh, too much cost. It adds weight but uh, also protects your coils from bending in case you know you got some heavy weight that's going to go on it. But really good way to do stuff and if you understand a little physics sometimes we can cheat our way around and get a really good thing. Like I said I really like this small one it's a good gain and uh, it fits perfectly and it just looks good. Okay one of the things I like to use when I make the mat you always need some kind of medium that's going to hold your coil in place and I found those yoga mats, uh, they're, they're cheap and it's a really good way to mount your coils on it so you can move your mat around, you can put your mat under your bed, under the couch, uh, under, um, under a dog bed or whatever. So I really enjoy uh, working with those yoga mats. And I'm going to grab my coils and I'm just going to put my coils in there. There's my four coils like we discussed in the calculator. They're in series, one after the next, with my box, with my power, and everything is running. So, right now I'm just figuring out where I'm going to place them, and i uh, just going to tape them up in place. Now, I get a lot of questions from people asking me, what frequency should I use for this, what frequency should I use for that. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, as you watch me um, install this mat here. Frequency is not as important as you think. Frequency is really important for the brain, and we're going to discuss that uh, at a later date. But I've done some lots of research and reading papers and stuff like that. There's a lot of meta research done on what frequency does what. And yes, certain frequency tend to do certain things to certain people with certain illnesses. There is some kind of belief in that, but there's not that much uh, conclusive research on it. It seems that some people are more responsive to certain frequencies than others. So overall, I always say low frequency, one to four for sleeping and meditating. Um, higher frequencies, um, like I love eight. eight. Eight hertz is really good, and I use that during the day. And for higher energy, staying awake, uh, studying like 14 to 32 seems to be pretty wicked um, and that's because of the brain stuff I had broken ribs and I used my pen to heal myself and to be honest with you guys um, I had it not even close to the frequencies that was claimed to be the one to heal bones and uh, within three weeks which is half the time of what it should have taken to heal my bones I was back on horses riding like at the middle of the week three I was riding horses again um, I mean I don't think somebody would have hit me in the ribs out of what I felt it but uh, I was back riding three weeks okay we're gonna speed up the system so you guys don't get bored of watching me so all I'm doing now is just securing the 
the wires and securing the coils in place so when the dog lays on the mat nothing moves my intention right now by the way is to insert this inside another dog mat I'm not going to let the dog lay on top of that by itself. I would put another cover on the other side and glue them together. There we go. All done. Okay, so like I said, um, I love this type of material. It makes it really good and really simple to use. And I will insert that into their existing dog bed. Um, and then they'll lay on it and the frequencies I'll be using will probably be fairly low frequencies one to four and they're gonna sleep on the night it's gonna relax them and they'll do what it's supposed to do so I went upstairs to get a drink and I came back and here's my acolyte Charlie and I find him laying on the mat I always like to leave the equipment running for an hour or so to make sure everything's running good that there's no heat build up that my mat was right I just like to test it and it looks like so does my cat Charlie. We really like to test it too, I guess. I'm going to show you a quick blooper that happened to me when I was playing with my horse. Hope you enjoyed that one too. Talk. Delta, this isn't going to work. Delta, come here. Come here. Sit. 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 Lay down. Lay down.